Why waste time on an intro when you can just roll the benchmarks? Today we're looking at the 4070 versus the 4070 Super. This is the Founders Edition of each card, which should MSRP at 550 and 600 even, but we'll see what happens on the actual market. It's 92 FPS versus 78, which is an 18% lead for the 4070 Super in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p Ultra. That's a pretty good showing for the Super card, given that it is 9% more expensive if you judge it by the MSRPs, which does make me wonder which one will go up or down down on the actual retail market. But I think more people would be looking at these GPUs for 1440p, and at 1440p Ultra, we're now seeing a 19% lead for the 4070 Super. It's at 63 FPS versus 53, and the 1% lows are a 16% lead at 52 versus 45. Uh, this is one of the best looking games out there, and it is ray traced at all of its graphics settings. So this is a ray tracing title. But, you know, maybe we'd want to get a bit more performance with which we could do using upscaling. If we kick on DLSS quality, but stick to 1440p ultra, we're now getting very nice frame rates. Uh, you know, I feel pretty good in a single player first person shooter in that 80 to 90 FPS range, and that's where we're hitting now, although it is still a 19% lead for the 4070 Super at 95 versus 80 FPS. The 1% lows are 76 versus 65. And let's go ahead and see what would happen if we're not just being the stubborn, I will always click on Ultra Gamer. What if I tried going to the high settings? Well, we'll look at uh, 81 FPS versus 72 here. They're actually a bit closer now if you look at the relative percentages with the 4070 Super taking a 13% lead over the 4070 non-Super and a 10% lead in the 1% low. So that's closer to even scaling with the price to performance ratio, although is still a bit better per, um, <clears throat> for the 4070 Super. If we move up to 4K resolution, uh, the Ultra settings don't work great, but if we kick on DLSS quality, it helps out significantly, and the 4070 Super is now able to de deliver uh, 55 FPS versus 4070, sorry, 47 on the 4070, uh, which is a 17% lead, and 17% uh, lead as well in the 1% lows. But again, if you don't want to stick to the Ultra preset, you could drop down to high, although I've also turned off upscaling. So this is native resolution, and I'm actually seeing a 22% lead now for the 4070 Super, which is 45 FPS versus 37. And the 1% lows are a 24% lead at 41 versus 33. So pretty significant advantages here at a native 4K resolution. However, interestingly, if I kick on DLSS at the quality setting, which would be a 1440p internal resolution and then an upscale, I think these are more like the settings you'd probably actually want to be playing with on these GPUs if you're playing at 4K, and that gives us 70 versus 63, which is only an 11% lead for the 4070 Super. And again, for 9% more money, that's a lot more even in terms of price to performance scaling. But let's move on to one of the other uh, best looking games out there, which is Alan Wake 2. And at 1080p high settings, and don't be fooled by the name, there is no ultra preset. High is the highest preset in this game that, uh, without ray tracing. We will look at the path tracing mode as well, don't worry. Uh, but at 1080p high, we're seeing 85 FPS versus 74. And in a slower paced game like this, that is extremely comfortable. It's a 15% lead for the 4070 Super. And the 1% lows are a lot tighter to get with at 59 versus 56. If we do try to kick on the path tracing mode, both GPUs are now struggling. So the RT high settings is the full path tracing mode. And even though we're still at 1080p resolution, that's 39 versus 34 FPS. That is a 15% lead for the 4070 Super and a more significant 25% lead in the 1% lows. But I really just don't think this is how most people would want to play the game. And this is even 1080p, which I think, you know, well, I'm sure some people are buying these GPUs for 1080p. I think more people would be targeting 1440p. But before we leave 1080p, let's just look at what DLSS could do for us here. I don't love using it at 1080p resolution. However, ray reconstruction does add a bit more stability to things I've noticed in my testing, and we do have that here. But anyway, we're now getting 60 FPS on the 4070 Super, which is a 13% lead over the 4070 non-Super which uh, it does hit 53 FPS. The 1% lows are 41 and 45 respectively, which is a 10% advantage for the Super card. 
Now, if you are hitting around 60 FPS, kicking on frame generation is uh, actually a pretty reasonable thing to do. And when we do that here, we're seeing 102 frames per second for the 4070 Super versus 91 on the 4070. That is a 12% lead and a 17% lead in the 1% lows. Now keep in mind, generated frames, like if you were getting 100 FPS without frame generation, it would look and feel better than 100 FPS achieved through frame generation. But uh, this is a high enough frame rate where I think it is very usable. If we go up to 1440p resolution, where I think these GPUs are, like I said, more likely to be targeted, uh, if we look at the high settings, which again is the max preset that doesn't have ray tracing enabled, the 4070 Super is able to hit 60 FPS, whereas the 4070 can't. Uh, it's still at 52 though, and in a slower paced game like this on a variable refresh rate display, I'm not sure there's a huge amount in that difference, but again, it is a 15% advantage for a GPU that's supposed to cost 9% more, so there's at least an improvement there. If we uh, use DLSS quality, which I think would be worth using here, it does boost frame rates pretty considerably. The 4070 Super jumps all the way to 90 frames per second, so gaining a lot from upscaling in this game. The 4070 hits 79, so now both of these are way above any frame rate you would actually need to play this style of slow-paced game, but it is still showing a 14% advantage for the 4070 Super in the averages and a 17% advantage in the 1% lows at 62 versus 53. But what about that path tracing mode? If we kick on the RT high preset, which is path tracing, both GPUs just get crushed. So I also kicked on DLSS quality, where they still kind of get crushed, but it's at least playable in a slower paced game like this. I just, I'm not sure this is the route I would go on either of these GPUs. We're talking 43 FPS versus 37. That is a 16% advantage for the 4070 Super and a 14% advantage in the 1% lows at 33 versus 29. If we go all the way down to performance mode upscaling, which at 1440p means a 720p internal render, and I don't know how much it comes through on a YouTube compression, but like the fine details of the little tree branches and the grass and things like that, we're losing a lot of detail and stability on those uh, versus native resolution. But we are getting 57 FPS on the 4070 Super now. 49 on the 4070. Here's that 16% is a pretty noticeable difference. One's a lot closer to 60 FPS than the other, but I probably wouldn't play at those settings anyway. That being said, if you are able to achieve about a 60 FPS baseline and the 4070 Super was pretty close to it, then kicking on frame generation can be a pretty reasonable thing to do. And that does uh, increase the smoothness to 92 frames per second of smoothness, although again, to be clear, not responsiveness, and there can be image quality issues. It's an 11% lead for the 4070 Super. They're about tied in the 1% lows where I have a feeling we're seeing more um, maybe CPU related issues going on over there. What if we moved to 4K resolution? Well, even without the ray tracing preset, uh, just at the high settings, this game is very, very demanding at a native 4K resolution and it's 32 FPS versus 29, and it's stuttery. The 1% lows are down at 23. I'm actually curious if we're going beyond 12 gigabytes of VRAM causing these stutters, because those frame time graphs do not look smooth. However, performance is low enough anyway that I, I really don't think those would be the settings you'd be wanting to use. If you kick on DLSS quality, that boosts, boosts performance massively, so much so that I think it was probably going beyond the 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and that DLSS, uh, lowering the internal resolution helps get the VRAM under control. And so that's further lending itself to that performance boost versus what we saw at native. Anyway, here we're seeing 55 FPS versus 50, which is only a 10% advantage for the 4070 Super, but that is at least scaling about evenly with its price increase. Now, uh, what if we took a look at Cyberpunk 2077? I'm mainly using this game as a path tracing benchmark, but we'll also look at it without path tracing so you can kind of see the trade-off. If we just look at 1080p without path tracing at just the normal ultra settings, no ray tracing enabled, both GPUs are crushing it. 136 FPS versus 117. That is a 16% advantage for the 4070 Super, only 7% advantage in the 1% lows, which again can be more CPU limited when you're achieving high frame rates. 
If we kick on RT overdrive mode though, neither GPU is doing a great job even at 1080p resolution. We do see an 18% advantage for the 4070 Super, and that does help it hit 40 FPS versus 34 on the 4070. And I will say, especially if you're on a controller, 40 FPS is kind of like, I just don't wanna play games at 30. 40, I could live with if I had to, but I just don't think that that's an acceptable trade-off at 1080p on this class of hardware. So you can kick on DLSS quality and get a massive performance boost, and you do get ray reconstruction, which like I said, in Cyberpunk, in my testing, it's it helps out the stability of this low resolution upscale a lot compared to before we had ray reconstruction. That being said, I still don't like upscaling at 1080p. Things like the palm tree branches look very shimmery. It's not great. But we are hitting very playable frame rates now at 76 and 67 respectively, which is a 13% advantage for the 4070 Super. And those frame rates are high enough that kicking on frame generation, I think actually makes a lot of sense. And in Cyberpunk, I don't see a lot of issues with frame generation with a base frame rate this high. The responsiveness still feels good, and the image quality also still looks pretty good to me, although everybody kind of reacts differently to frame generation. Anyway, we're now seeing 125 FPS versus 111, which is a 13% advantage for the Super card. Keep in mind that a you know a 120 FPS achieved without frame generation would both look and feel better than this does. Anyway, if we move up to 1440p resolution, which I think is where these GPUs would more likely be targeted, uh, first we'll take a look at no ray tracing. If you just kick on the ultra settings, what do you get? Well, 85 FPS versus 74, which is a 15% advantage for the 4070 Super, and it is 12% better in the 1% lows at 65 versus 58. So the 4070 Super continuing to show a better than even price to performance uh, advantage over the 4070, but uh, how do they handle RT overdrive? At 1440p, I think using DLSS quality is for most people gonna be very acceptable. However, do we hit the performance numbers we need to? Well, 51 versus 44, it's a 16% advantage for the super card, and I think that's pretty meaningful here. Getting into the 50s for a lot of people is gonna perhaps make this a pretty usable experience, and quality upscaling isn't too bad here. Although this is a first person shooter and a lot of people would target a higher frame rate than that. If you do wanna get a higher base frame rate at 1440p, you're gonna have to crank the upscaling even more aggressively. And if we go all the way down to performance mode upscaling, we only have a 720p internal resolution. And if you look at those palm tree branches and find details in the distance, we get a lot of shimmer and instability and there's just a loss of overall crispness and detail and cohesion. But our frame rate numbers are now hitting 73 and 64 respectively, which is a 14% advantage for the 4070 Super. These uh, were high enough base frame rates that I think kicking on frame generation does make sense if you are willing to take that performance mode upscale, which ah, that's, that's really my big issue here. Um, now, if you are willing to take this setup, it does get you to 116 frames per second on the 4070 Super and 102 on the 4070. But like I said, that's it's you've just lost a lot of de like those palm tree branches. I don't, like how much does this come through the YouTube compression? You guys see those things flickering, right? It's just it can be distracting. But whatever. Anyway, if we move up to 4K resolution and we kick on RT overdrive mode, your only shot at something approaching playable is to go to performance mode upscaling. And even then you're under 40 frames per second and the 1% lows go below 30. And that's on both GPUs. It, the averages are 39 versus 34. And it's a 15% advantage for the 4070 Super and 29 versus 28 in the 1% lows. In general, I just don't think that these are gonna be 4K path tracing GPUs, uh, no matter how much you're willing to upscale. But not every game out there is this incredibly demanding. Let's take a look at Baldur's Gate 3. At 1080p Ultra, we are CPU limited. You can see the, CPU, the GPUs are not reaching full utilization. And this tends to happen in this game, even on a 7800X 3D CPU that I've got here. But you're over 120 FPS on both GPUs. 
The 1% lows are tied at 72, so on this style of game, you're absolutely fine on either one of these GPUs at 1080p. You're really going to be more concerned about your CPU stuttering in the large city areas. If we go up to 1440p resolution, we are now less CPU bottlenecked, although the 4070 Super uh, is, uh, and the 4070 in some cases, is not always at 100% usage, so there's still a bit of CPU limitation happening here. Um, and so anyway, we're seeing 115 FPS versus 102. It is a 13% advantage now for the 4070 Super since we are less CPU bound, but a 23% advantage in the 1% lows, but those again can happen with CPU spikes. Um, anyway, if we move up to 4K Ultra settings, we are now seeing 69 nice on the Super card versus 59 on the 4070. That's a 17% advantage. And the 1% lows are 60 versus 53, a 13% advantage, and we are now pretty much GPU limited, other than I think you can still occasionally get a little bit of a, a loading spike on certain things in this game. Um, but anyway, both of these GPUs look like they're good for this game all the way up through 4K Ultra native resolution. So not every game needs to be as demanding as a path tra traced cyberpunk. If we move to Starfield at 1080p Ultra settings, and do note that I have turned off upscaling, the Ultra preset in this game would normally include upscaling, I've turned that off. Uh, we're now seeing 85 versus 74, which is a 15% advantage for the Super card, and a 13% advantage in the 1% lows at 60 versus 53. So, um, and also this game performs much better on NVIDIA GPUs than it did at launch. So if you saw any launch coverage, including from me, uh, NVIDIA GPUs were struggling, especially at the Ultra settings, especially with the Ultra Shadows, that, that performs much better now than at launch. At 1440p Ultra, we are moving up to 69 nice versus 61 on the 4070, and it's a 13% advantage for the Super card. Uh, it's a 9% advantage in the 1% lows, and both GPUs are extremely playable here, even in the New Atlantis City area. It's not the most demanding area of the game, but in general, there's a lot of areas that perform much better than these, these large city environments. But uh, in a first-person shooter, it's possible you would be looking for more frame rate than what we were getting at right around 60. Personally, I like to be closer to 90 FPS in a single-player first-person shooter. And if we kick on DLSS quality, the 4070 Super is able to hit 85, which is a 12% advantage over the 76 FPS on the non-Super card. And the 1% lows are at 62 versus 58, which is a 7% advantage for the Super GPU. But this game has also been updated now to include frame generation. And if we're well over 60 FPS, I think kicking on frame generation makes a lot of sense. Which means that you could enjoy 1440p Ultra as long as at 129 FPS versus 116, 11% advantage for the Super card. But again, with some compromises to image quality given the uh, upscale and the frame generation. So not a perfect experience, but this would be a good way to take advantage of the smoothness of a high refresh rate display in this game. So definitely a way a lot of people I think would choose to play the game. At 4K resolution, the ultra settings are just a bit too much. We're seeing 41 FPS versus 37. And I mean, some people might go for it, just max things out and call it playable, especially if you're on a controller or something, I'd probably uh, adjust settings. This is an 11% advantage for the Super card, so one of the less impressive victories we've seen. But again, 9% uh, increased MSRP for 11% more performance. We're still at least even and actually beating it a little bit for the new Super GPU. At, uh, at 4K Ultra settings, if we enable DLSS quality upscaling, I think DLSS quality at 4K is uh, looks very good. Even on my 4090, I generally will just kick on DLSS quality on a 4K screen. Uh, for the massive performance boost um, and still looks quite good. Uh, here that's enough to get the super card to 60 FPS even in this test, whereas the non-super card hits 54, so 11% advantage for the super and a 14% advantage in the 1% lows at 48 versus 42. And uh, when you can hit around 60 FPS, I think for me that's kind of the magic breaking point on should I kick on frame gen or not. So we're very borderline here, and people who are more or less sensitive to latency and, and uh, interpolation artifacts may find this on one side or the other of it. For me, it's kind of right, right on acceptable. 
Um, we are able to generate frames and hit 84 on the super GPU versus 74 on the non-super card. Again, though, keep in mind in 84 FPS achieved without frame generation would look and feel better. Now, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, I'm gonna test out at the basic preset because I think most people playing multiplayer games are going to choose to lower graphics settings to increase their competitive edge. That puts us to 317 frames per second on the super card versus 284 on the non-super card. It's a 12% advantage for the super and a 6% advantage in the 1% lows where over 200 FPS on both means it's possible we're hitting some CPU limitation in the 1% lows. If we move up to 1440p resolution but stay at the basic preset, um, we're hitting 207 FPS versus 235 FPS. And really, I think that if you're not able to get the kill at over 200 frames per second, it's more of a skill issue than a hardware issue. But that's my personal opinion. Anyway, the 1% lows are actually measuring a 27% advantage for the Super GPU at 154 versus 121. Now, if we move up to 4K resolution, but no upscaling, we're actually able to break 121 FPS on the 4070, and the super card can hit 138, which is a 14% advantage. Uh, the 1% lows are 74 versus 83, which is a 12% advantage for the super, and this is really just going to show that, you know, if you're willing to turn down graphic settings, um, and, you know, you can really hit some high frame rates, even at 4K resolution in a lot of games. But again, this is a pretty well-optimized, you know, competitive multiplayer title, so... Anyway, if we take a look at Resident Evil 4 Remake, we can get a look at the RE engine, which Capcom uses in a lot of their games. And this is a very good looking one and it manages to perform extremely well. We're seeing 150 FPS versus 130 FPS, which is a 15% advantage for the super card, but they're both doing great. The max settings here do include ray tracing and they are very, very VRAM heavy. But especially as you move up resolutions, so if we go up to 1440p max settings, um, we're kind of on that 12 gigabyte borderline, but it does seem like both GPUs are still giving us a pretty flat frame time graph. And it's 114 FPS versus 98, which is a 16% advantage for the super GPU. And the 1% lows are even 97 versus 87, 12% advantage for the super. And both of them are performing extremely well. But what if you wanted to move up to 4K resolution? At 4K resolution, we are still actually performing pretty well. We're at 66 FPS versus 56, which does give an 18% advantage to the Super GPU. 16% advantage in the 1% lows. And um, the advantage is growing here at the higher resolution. So I'm wondering if some of the hardware differences between the two um, are accentuated in a very memory bandwidth heavy kind of thing, although they have a similar memory bandwidth. I don't know, it's interesting, but it did, yeah, the advantage did improve at the higher resolution. I do want to mention, though, that you can move uh, on to the prioritized graphics settings rather than the Mac settings. These are much more restrained on their VRAM usage, and they also turn off the ray tracing. And here at 4K native resolution at these settings, we are able to hit 78 and 68 FPS respectively, which is a 15% advantage for the super card in both the uh, average FPS and the 1% lows, which are 69, nice, versus 60. So good performance overall, even without upscaling in that game. But what about some Unreal Engine 5 games? Lords of the Fallen is the most demanding of the Unreal Engine 5 games that I have tested. And at 1080p Ultra, these GPUs can handle it. It's 65 versus 74, so a 14% advantage for the Super GPU. They're about tied in the 1% lows at 50 and 51. You can see a bit of stuttery frame time graph as we round this corner. And I think that's Unreal Engine 5 traversal stutters as you kind of load into a new area. And those are more of a CPU and just game engine streaming issue rather than a GPU issue. And I think that's why we saw not much separation in those 1% lows. If we move up to 1440p Ultra, uh, now even the 4070 Super cannot average 60 frames per second. It's 53 versus 46. That's a 15% advantage and an 8% advantage in the 1% lows. But again, this game, 1440p Ultra on a 4070 Super is not going to give you 60 frames per second. 
that's pretty brutal. However, I have noticed that Unreal Engine 5 seems to be designed with upscaling in mind. Things like Nanite and Lumen and virtual shadow maps, they're all very, I think, per pixel calculated. So reducing the internal resolution of the pixels has a massive performance boost. Uh, so quality upscaling gets us to 83 FPS on the super card and 72 FPS on the non super card, which is a 15% advantage. We're also seeing an 18% advantage in the 1% lows. But what if we wanted to play at 4K resolution? At ultra settings, neither GPU can even average 30 frames per second. It's 29 versus 25, which is a 16% advantage for the super, but it's just not that great of an experience on either GPU. The 1% lows are even worse at 22 and 24 respectively. 9% lead to the, to the super card, but I just don't think these are the settings you are looking for on these GPUs. But as we have seen, the uh, cards do respond very well to upscaling, so we could have enabled some upscaling there. But let's go ahead and move on to Robocop Rogue City. It's another Unreal Engine 5 game. And here at 1080p Epic Settings, which is its maximum preset, and I did turn on the um, the better reflections, I forget, what's it called? Like Lumen hardware, ref uh, Lumen reflections, something like that. Anyway, I turned everything up. At uh, 1080p, we're at 99 FPS versus 89, which is an 11% lead for the Super GPU and a 7% lead in the 1% lows at 76 versus 71. If we move up to 1440p resolution, again, the maximum settings, we are seeing 69 nice for the Super versus 62 on the 70, and that is an 11% advantage. However, um, is that the, the frame rates that you're actually looking for on these GPUs in a first person shooter? I know breaking 60 FPS is a good experience. You could totally play it. Um, I just think in first person shooter games, even in single player, as I've mentioned before, to me hitting more around that 80 to 90 FPS range is a lot more preferable. And we've seen Unreal Engine does seem to, Unreal Engine 5 does seem to respond particularly well to upscaling. And that's what we're looking at here. If you kick on DLSS at the quality setting, we move up to 89 FPS on the non super card and 99 FPS on the super card, which gives us an 11% advantage for the super. The 1% lows are actually a 17% advantage at 77 versus 66. So, Again, if you're using uh, quality level upscaling, you can max out the game otherwise and get very high refresh rates. Now, because we're able to achieve very high refresh rates and this game does feature DLSS 3 frame generation support, I thought I'd check that out. Because like I said, if you're already achieving, man, what were we, almost 100 frames per second on the super, uh, kicking on frame generation is gonna have, um, still feel very responsive, and there's not very big gaps between frames, so the image quality of the interpolation is quite good. Uh, here we're seeing 141 FPS versus 126. It's 12% advantage for the super, and they're about tied in the 1% lows because they're so high already. They're both over 100 even in the 1% lows. So that would be a very interesting way to play the game. If we move up to 4K resolution, if we try to max the game out at epic settings, we do struggle at 37 FPS even on the super card. And the uh, non-super card is at 32. The 1% lows are 28 and 33 respectively, so the averages are a 16% advantage for the Super, and the 1% lows are an 18% advantage for the Super. So again, uh, with a 9% price increase, theoretically, hopefully that's what actually plays out in the market, we are definitely beating that. But let's take a look at one more Unreal Engine 5 game, just since I think this will be such a popular engine in the future. Uh, here we're seeing 1080p Ultra in Immortals of Avium, which was one of the very first games to launch with the big Unreal Engine 5 feature set. Nanite, Lumen, Virtual Shadow Maps, we've got it all. And these GPUs can handle 1080p just fine. We're at 94 versus 85, which is an 11% lead for the Super GPU. The 1% lows are a lot closer together. Again, can be some of that Unreal Engine uh, traversal stutter and, and things like that as you, as you load into areas. There's some uh, performance spikes that'll hit both of them. 
Anyway, if we move up to 1440p resolution, which I think is more relevant, we're seeing 67 FPS for the Super versus 58 on the non-Super. That is a 16% advantage for the Super GPU. The 1% lows are a bit closer together, but still an 11% advantage for the Super at 49 versus 44. So overall, we are kind of around that 60 FPS mark, which can be pretty good. But again, this is a first-person shooter style of game, so I would be interested in boosting those frame rates. And uh, Unreal Engine 5, once again, takes a massive performance jump from quality level upscaling, going all the way up to almost 100 frames per second on the Super. It's 98 versus the non-Super at 88. That is an 11% advantage for the Super GPU. And the 1% lows are hitting 67 versus 66. So they're about tied, but like I said, Unreal Engine 5 can definitely have some little uh, frame time spikes that can pick up in the 1% lows that aren't really the GPU's fault necessarily. It's more of an engine thing. Anyway, if we move up to 4K resolution, uh, again, the ultra settings do prove to be a bit too much for the experience that I think most people would be looking for here. And we're seeing 34 FPS on the Super and only 29 on the non-Super. This is a 17% advantage for the Super GPU and the 1% lows are a bit closer together at 23 and 22 respectively. I think that's a lot of benchmarks. How about we pop out for some quick final thoughts on these GPUs? My thoughts on the 4070 Super are gonna depend pretty much entirely on what it ends up costing in the actual retail market. I was looking at the Founders Edition of both GPUs, which should sell at their MSRPs of 549 and 599 as availability exists. We'll have to see what happens to partner cards on the actual retail market. Because if we do hold those MSRPs, 599 compared to 549 is a 9% price increase to buy the Super GPU over the non-Super GPU. And that, uh, if we look at our relative performance chart right there, that number, the 4070 Super, that performance number, you ready for the, uh, you know, people say, why don't I do more graphs? How about this? Instead of doing a graph at the end, why don't you just stare at that number as we scroll through all the games? That's how much faster the Super is than the non-Super in all of these games at these different settings. And you know what? It's always more than 9% when you're not CPU limited. It's generally in the 10 to uh, 10 to 19% range, and I would say hitting around 15% is pretty typical. Now, the exact difference is going to depend on exactly which games you test, and nobody can test them all. I tried to test a large variety of them at a variety of graphics settings, and so I think calling it about a 15% uplift for the Super GPU over the non-Super is pretty reasonable. And so if you're getting a 15% performance uplift for 9% more money, you do now have a GPU offering better value. It is, um, and if you compare it to the launch of the 40 series, where they would have both been the same price, then compared to when the 40 series started and the 4070 first launched, we are now seeing a 15% price to performance improvement over the beginning of the generation, because remember we only dropped to 549 when AMD applied pricing pressure in the market with their 7800 XT at 499 MSRP. Now, if you would like me to uh, take a look at the 7800 XT versus the 4070 Super, don't worry, I've ran it through the same benchmark. So once I get that footage edited together, that'll be on the channel. And I've also tested cards like the 3070 Ti. I think that would be an interesting comparison point since that was the 599 30 series GPU. It was one of the worst value GPUs of that series. And it's also an eight gigabyte GPU, which I have a feeling in this, uh, you know, in this set of games that are very modern and using uh, often a a lot more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, it will be interesting to see how that generationally stacks up. Um, so anyway, I think the 4070 Super is a lot more like what I would have liked to have gotten at the beginning of the generation, and we are now getting it. Um, of course, I would love an even lower price. I would love more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM because a lot of games are getting pretty close to that already at 1440p. So I'm not saying this is the perfect GPU, but I do uh, think it is now the best value GPU of NVIDIA's 40 series for 1440p gaming. Now, as the rest of the Super cards come out, stay tuned to the channel. 
I will continue to test those. I've, I've revisited the entire AMD 7000 series in the same set of games uh, for comparison points, and I've tested a bunch of other NVIDIA GPUs, uh, the non-super versions. And um, so anyway, just stay tuned to the channel over the next few weeks. We're gonna be getting tons of these massively detailed head-to-head uh, -head benchmarks. Hopefully you guys are interested and hopefully you appreciated the just jumping straight into the benchmarks with no intro, no sponsor. I can afford to do that from time to time with the thank of cha uh, thanks of channel members who have clicked the join button down uh, there to directly support the channel financially, which helps motivate me to do the, uh, <laughs> I have no idea how long it takes to run all these GPUs through this many games at three resolutions, at variety of graphic settings and upscaling settings and frame generation settings. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. But anyway, uh, the benchmarking is mostly complete, and now it'll just be a lot of side-by-side -side editing. I feel like I'm rambling. You guys get the idea. The 4070 Super is a better value than the 4070. It's about 15% faster, and we'll be doing other head-to-head -head comparisons uh, in the future. I hope all of you have an excellent day.